In today's video, we're going to demonstrate how you can rapidly build custom Blazor admin user interfaces with all the advantages of .NET 8 by using the ServiceStack Blazor components library. Productive web interfaces for back office staff or admin users can save a significant amount of time. They enable non-developers to manage metadata, users, sales, and other business needs. Since these pages are admin only and not visible to customers directly, the time developers get to spend on these backend systems can be quite limited. Therefore, getting as much functionality working quickly with the ability to customize these pages later is very beneficial. And the service Stack Blazor Components Library has been growing to include more components for this kind of use case that are optimized for the new render modes in Blazor for .NET 8, including the new interactive auto render mode, which initially renders using Blazor Server and transparently switches to use Blazor WebAssembly. This .NET 8 feature means users get instant rendering from your ASP.NET Core server, avoiding that wait time to download and initialize .NET libraries on the browser client and without the need for any custom pre-rendering solution. To illustrate how you can build these custom admin screens quickly with Blazor, we're going to look at an application we've upgraded to .NET 8 called Blazor Diffusion, where we needed a way to manage data in the backend, but wanted something integrated directly with the main Blazor user interface. Blazor Diffusion is an AI text-to-image generation application written in Blazor, starting from our own Blazor WASM template. The full source code to the project is on GitHub if you want to take a look at how it was built. It enables users to browse high quality AI generated imagery curated by a community of users. You can also sign up to generate your own as well as share and like others work to help create amazing galleries of images generated by Stable Diffusion. One feature Blazor Diffusion has is a curated list of modifiers, which are text segments used in the prompt that generates the image. This list makes it easier for those looking to generate images of a similar style and highlights the ones found most useful with high quality results. To manage these modifiers and other data in the SQLite database, we'll need some admin pages optimized for specific tasks that are centered around moderation. To get started, we're going to create a landing page for admin users to navigate to the different pages of our custom admin UI. The updated Blazor Diffusion project uses the new Blazor WASM template. Previously, we targeted Blazor Server only for faster development cycles, but with .NET 8, we get the best of both worlds when using the ServiceStack Blazor WASM template. And since the components in the ServiceStack Blazor library support both Blazor WebAssembly and Blazor Server interactivity modes, we can utilize the interactive auto render mode by default and switch to either the WebAssembly or server render modes if we need to for specific pages without changing the usage of our specific components. To maintain this level of flexibility, we'll want to put our new admin screens in the .client project so they can be shared across the server and the WASM client. The Appos project uses the .NET project as a dependency so both applications can access the Blazor pages that are placed in the .client project. One thing to remember is that if you have IOC dependencies that your pages inject, you will need to register them in the program.cs file for both the client and the app host project since the WebAssembly project runs in the browser and requires its own isolated setup from the server. Okay, so we'll start with an index.razor file and this will be our landing page for admin users to access the admin functionality. So we'll need to also restrict this page for users that have the admin role using the authorize attribute. Previously, this project used ServiceStack's built-in authentication model, but since upgrading it to .NET 8, we've incorporated it with ASP.NET Core's identity authentication. Despite this complete migration of authentication models, attributes like Authorize still work the exact same way as you'd expect. 
On this index.razor page, we'll want two features, a simple heading and a list of links of resources for admin users to manage. All of the service.blazor components are designed for use with Tailwind CSS. So if you have a favorite source of great looking Tailwind components, dropping them into any of the service.blazor templates can save you a lot of time and make your application have a professional looking design with minimal effort. These templates also utilize the standard Tailwind tooling, which is available from an easy to use npm task by running the command npm run UI colon dev. This will listen for changes on your Razor pages and other resources and automatically update your app.css and your whole application styling. Now with our Tailwind process running, we can build the list of links and we're going to use the nav list component from the service tag blazer library. Within the navlist component, let's create a link for managing creatives. Creatives contain all the data used by Stable Diffusion to generate the artwork requested by the user. We manage links within a navlist using individual navlist item components for each link. Running our application and logging in with the example admin user, we can navigate to forward slash admin and be greeted with the page that we've just created. Currently, this is pointing to an empty Blazor page that we'll need to fill in with the ability for moderators to manage the creative items. Also, to manage the modifiers, let's create a navlist item to a page for managing the predefined texts that make up those modifiers. Each navlist item can specify a title, href, and icon, and its own render fragment. The icon attribute takes an image info data type, which is populated by using the icon attribute on the related model type. Now let's make the two pages for managing the data for the creatives and the modifiers. As a moderator or admin, we need at least a way to query and filter the data in the table we're looking at for the creatives and the modifiers, as well as a way to edit and delete these entries as well. To achieve this with the least amount of effort initially, we can use the service tag blazer auto query grid component, specifying the model type of modifier and related auto query request DTOs to the API's property. With this single component, we get to manage the data in the modifiers table. So saving our changes, our modifiers admin page already has a fully functional grid hooked up to our modifiers auto query service with validation, paging, filtering, all working together. And we can do the same for the creatives page as well, just by repeating the process. And we have an entry point in our application to manage the data in both these tables. And because these are fully custom Blazor pages in your application, we can do whatever we want to them to improve them visually. For example, we could use the breadcrumbs component to quickly add another method to navigate back and forth between admin pages. Another quality of life feature that we could add would be to enable contextual navigation between admin pages. For example, when viewing data in the creative admin page, we could navigate to the view of the modifiers admin page and only show the modifiers related to the selected creative row. We can do this because the creative table has a one-to-many relationship with the modifiers table used to generate a set of images. So the auto query service for creatives does return the IDs for the modifiers related to a single creative that we're interested in, but it doesn't know about our custom admin pages. So we can achieve this functionality that we want by customizing the auto query grid component itself in the creatives admin page to not only specify the columns that we want to display, but also change the way they're presented. And for the modifiers column, we can use a custom template to achieve this. The custom template for the modifiers column will then link back with a standard href to the admin modifiers page passing in the query string of the IDs which we want to view as a comma separated list of modifier IDs. The auto query grid component on the modifiers page will then 
automatically pass this query string to the configured auto query service in the component. In this case, the ID query strings is matching an implicit convention feature to perform a SQL in query with the ID property, which results in displaying only the modifiers related to the creative we selected in the creatives admin page. Continuing this pattern for other admin pages, we can now manage artists which are similar to modifiers but contain a list of predefined artist names, as well as albums which are a way for moderators to curate groupings of generated images, and finally artifacts themselves which are the individual generated images that are sometimes flagged as not safe for work or can be specified as the pinned image for a specific creative. Each of these tables relates to one or more different moderation tasks that can use data from other tables, and the standard auto-generated forms just sometimes aren't suited to what you need. Thankfully, the auto query grid component is custom customizable in many ways, making it a lot quicker to get a better user experience without re-implementing your own grid. One of these customizations is the custom edit form that can replace the auto-generated edit form itself. This customization of the edit form is perfect for the moderation task of selecting the best image as the pin image to show to users when they're looking at a specific creative. For this kind of functionality, the requirements are quite simple. Moderators need to see a list of creatives that haven't yet selected a pinned image, and once selecting a creative that needs a pinned image assigned, they need to quickly be able to choose from all the artifacts that are a part of that same creative. First, the predefined filtering can be done by overriding the configure query attribute on the auto query grid component to add a query parameter where the primary artifact ID is empty. Then we use a custom tab component to trigger a change in filtering behavior to refresh the grid. This way the creatives page can be used for several different moderation tasks. By using the custom edit form template, we can then present a new dialog showing all the artifacts from that creative for the user to select, and then save, which will then update our data to select the correct pinned image from that creative. And we can copy this pattern for each of the admin screens we need to create, modifying them along the way to optimize the user experience. Another good example of the customizations that you can do to the auto query grid and auto forms components we can see in the managing of the artist data. Just like the modifiers, it is just a list of text. The auto-generated edit form, however, doesn't support complex properties like a list of strings, but all the other properties for the editing artist works fine. Instead of using a custom edit form though, we can attribute the update artist types property with an input attribute to use a different control. Here we'll use the tags control since we are storing a list of freeform strings. This approach gives us a great user experience for editing artists, and our auto query grid control remains concise and specific to this task. Lastly, let's look at albums. Here we have a many-to-many -many relationship between album and artifact using the album artifact table. We need to be able to both remove artifacts that already exist in an album and add new ones to existing albums as well. We can use a standard auto query grid for managing the metadata about a specific album, and for managing the contents of an album we use a tab control to switch between multiple auto query grids that show rows for each related table. When editing an album's contents, we use a single auto query grid in a modal dialog that can switch between adding and removing artifacts. We don't even need to use a custom edit form here since we're only viewing and selecting artifacts we want removed or added. We can use the row selected event to track the selected items for each and 
Save button to trigger an API call for our added and removed artifacts. And now we have a great looking set of admin pages integrated into our application directly. Let's test out the workflow for managing these modifiers as an admin. For example, a moderator of Blazor Diffusion might notice that common keywords from prompts are producing excellent results for generated images, but we don't yet have that word as a modifier. Since modifiers are presented to users as a list of options that can be applied to a creative task, we can present words that perform particularly well as options that they can choose from. For example, users specifying Natural in their prompts for generating landscapes are producing beautiful images with minimal artifacts. An admin would then go to the admin menu via the link in the header that they can see when they're logged in, select the modifiers page and add natural as an option that can now be seen on the create page for all users. Another phrase that's helping to produce amazing visuals is God rays. Creatives specifying God rays in their prompt are not only getting great imagery of sunlight peering through clouds, but also producing some imagery with some great lighting effects in different situations. The admin can then add God rays as a new modifier and when combined with natural landscapes produces some amazing images. If you want to create your own imagery using Blazor Diffusion, you can see it hosted at the site blazordiffusion.com. Or if you want to see how else we utilize Service Stack Blazor components in both the application and additional admin sections, you can view the full source code in our GitHub repository, for which I'll put a link in the description. Service Stack auto query services and low code generated UIs are a great place to start for admin user functionality but when it comes time to have a more streamlined experience, it's hard to beat directly integrating custom UIs designed specifically to perform common tasks into your application. The Service Stack Blazor Components Library makes that initial migration as painless as possible, so you can focus on what changes would best suit your use case and your users. Well, that's it for this video. If you have any suggestions or feedback about our templates or videos, let us know in the comments. And if you want to know more, check out our other videos and join us in the Service Stack community through our Discord and GitHub discussions. Service Stack is free for individuals and open source projects, so anyone is welcome. And as always, thanks for watching.